All right. Hey, welcome to Win Today Podcast. My name is Cyrus Jaffrey, and I've got my two co-hosts here, Benito and Jason. What's happening, guys? What's going on? Awesome, awesome. Okay, so today we've got a special guest, man. We've been kind of, I haven't officially met him yet, uh, but I've been following him for the last couple of years, man, since he's left his uh, prior insurance uh, carrier. And uh, man, it's been so much fun to watch him. I'm excited for him to share some of the stuff that he's doing. He's having a lot of success. And I think you guys are going to get some great stuff out of this. So Brian, what's going on, big guy? Hey, thank you guys. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. It's good to meet you, Jason and uh, Benito. Nice to meet you. And hey, thanks for having me on your podcast, man. I really appreciate it. You got it, man. You got it. It's uh, it's always have to, it's always nice to have good people like you, man. Especially because I consider you a friend. We talk about we we talk all more about numbers and stuff all the time, you <laughs> yeah. know. Like, yeah. and we're in some of these calls with like nationwide stuff. It's like, hey, I know that guy at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and since you're new and you've had him so much success, so it'd be really nice to talk about that as well um, of how you got yeah. up so fast and running. So hey, let's go back in the day, man. So how you got into insurance? Uh, why insurance? And then also. Um, and, uh, just talk about maybe your past success or whatnot. So, yeah. So, you know, when I was growing up, I had a briefcase and I always said that, you know, when I get older, I want to be an insurance agent. I'm kidding. No, nobody ever says <laughs> nobody that. Ever says that. <laughs> I thought it was serious at first. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no one ever says that. Um, no, I, you know, I got into insurance much like many people I meet in the industry by total accident. Right. Um, God, I started, I was 18. I left high school. I went, got my real estate license. I was selling real estate the market crashed. Then I got recruited to, um, New York life doing life insurance. Now, I don't know. I think it was like 2021 20, at the time. And I did not believe in life insurance. I don't have any kids. I don't have any assets. And it was a hard sale because I didn't believe in the product, but I did, you know, I did sell it. Um, did okay. But, you know, it got to a point where it was becoming a grind and I didn't enjoy it. So I was looking for a business to start, right? You know, I was always one of, you know, one of those people were like, well, I'm not getting a job because no one's going to tell me my worth. <laughs> right? If I can make a dollar on my own, then I've earned it. If I make a million, then I've earned it, right? So I found this business that I thought would be interesting um, to cross sell insurance. And that was the tax business. So I stumbled upon this franchise called Liberty Tax Service. And I did the application, went for the interview. And they're like, um, yeah, you can open a franchise, but you need, you know, at least 100 grand to get started. And I'm like, well, I don't have 100 grand. <laughs> but I was able to pull, pull together like 40 grand and I bought the territory. So I bought this territory and then the company lent me 25,000 in operating capital, um, which I used to open a store. And we, I didn't know anything about taxes, but I opened this tax business and I opened, <laughs> it, it was 2009 we opened, it was the first year. Um, I ended up getting like five employees that were just, you know, laid off from like, you know, the city, Wall Street, accountants, uh, they, they weren't working, but they knew taxes. And I was basically able to hire them for like minimum wage at the time to come and do taxes for this new business. And they did because the whole company's spiel, spiel was, you don't need to know taxes. You just need to manage the business. Right. And that's basically what I did. So I, my job was marketing, getting people in the door. And that's all I did was I was dragging people in the door, come sit with us. And we grew really fast. Um, it, we were probably the top two office uh, that first year for new offices. And I, I drank the Kool-Aid and I ended up opening up seven offices within three years. Whoa, that's um, a lot. Different territories. Yeah. So I took on a partner and we opened seven offices. And, <clears throat> and after about four years, um, year one, year two was a struggle. Um, I made a mistake by growing too fast because what I was making in the in the the store that was profitable, I was using for the other store that I just opened. But after about three years, it got pretty good. Um, and I would say about year four, it was pretty much running on its own. We had really good people. 
good staff, good management in place. And then I got bored. <laughs> so, so now I had a big tax business and, you know, I'd recently got married and I, at the time I was working basically from January to April. And uh -huh. after April, I would just really just hang out and go to gym, chill with the boys. And my wife was like, so you're really not going to do anything after tax season? <laughs> <I was laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm planning for next tax season. But, you know, I was like, you know what, you're right, you're right, I, I need to find something to do with the stores. And some of the, uh, you know, the employees that we had that we were retaining all year. And that's when I thought, you know, PNC, that everybody needs home and auto, right? We already have clients, let's go get our PNC license and cross all these customers. So mm -hmm. that's what I did. I went, got my PNC license. And I thought that you could just open an independent agency. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I go <laughs> and, you know, I'm like filling out applications for progressive and travelers. And, and then, you know, they call you up and like, yeah, so how many years of experience do you have? None. Do you have a book of business? No. Okay. Come back to us in five years. <laughs> I'm like, how the hell are you supposed to do this? Um, and then someone said, hey, go to Allstate. And I was like, yeah, sure. I go to Austin. And they're like, come on in. We'll have you. I was like, yes, cool. So I opened an Allstate agency in 2014. And um, it was it was fun. It was an amazing experience at the time for me. I, I learned a lot. I learned the business. And we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We just knew we liked talking to people. We knew how to quote, hey, we're saving you money. Boom, let's go. Right. So as I started, it was me and one producer, and we had a service staff. So it was three of us. And I literally just DM'd everybody in my, you know, my Facebook, my LinkedIn. I pull out my phone. I called everybody that I knew. And I said, Hey, it's Brian. Just opened my Allstate agency. I'd love to quote your home and auto. Uh, I'm good. How do you know you're good? What do you mean you're good? Dude, it's me. We're friends. Who <laughs> who would you rather give your business to? And we built a two million dollar book in a year and a half. Okay. So, you know, we started scratch, and then Allstate, you know, the region came to me at the time. They're like, Brian, you're doing great. What are you doing? I'm like, What do you mean? I'm not doing anything special. I'm just talking to people. And you know, the regional manager said, Hey, I think you'll be good to run a bigger book. Um, why don't you sell this and we'll let you buy a $5 million agency. And I was like, nice. That sounds good. Time out. So you have to sell your book and then yeah. buy a different book. Yeah. Okay. Weird. I know. I wish I, I, I was able to keep it, but um, you know, they have their own rules. Yeah. So it was, that was part of the deal. I had to sell that book. So I didn't really think much about it. Um, and I started on the enhanced contract. So at this point, after about two years, the commissions start looking a little, mm -hmm. you know, they start looking a little sad. And I'm like, hmm, mm -hmm. I missed that enhanced contract. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was a no-brainer for me at the time to just sell it and and buy the other one because now we're talking a bigger agency, bigger cash flow and potential for a bigger bonus. So I um, you know, I bought the bigger agency. We 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 crushed it. We had a 4.0 bonus at the end of the year. And I got this big fat bonus check. And I was like, holy crap, this is the most money I've ever seen in one <laughs> shot. Right? Like, and I had no plans for it. Right. I had like no plans for that money. And I was like, this is, I'm in the wrong business. So I sold the tax business and I went all in on the insurance stuff. Oh, okay. So I got out of the tax business. I, I was like, I'm in the wrong industry, right? And I went all in on the insurance. Now, I thought I was going to spend most of my time at Allstate, but, you know, recent changes really left a bad taste in my mouth. And, you know, I I didn't see the future, right? Because you, you get to a certain point and that's it. You hit a ceiling. Nobody wants you to bust through that ceiling. They kind of want to, you know, keep you in this, this little yeah. box. You're yeah. comfortable hit your numbers, hit your bonuses, go on your trips. Cool. And that was fine. Like I was, you know, if I, if I didn't want more, I would have been 
that's a comfortable life. Yeah. Like that was not a bad life. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, the office was self-sufficient. I was playing golf two days a week. What else could I ask for? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, I, I was getting too comfortable and I'm like, you know, I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, I'm still young. I still got all this energy. Is this really where, where I want to end up? And, you know, they came out and made some announcements and I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm out. Goodbye. So, <laughs> so I sold, I sold my agency and we started uh, Clarity last year, August. So we officially completed a year and um, we just went crazy. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> We, you know, we learned, we took everything we learned, Mm -hmm. uh, everything, all the products that we wish we had, you know, everything we wish we could have sold. And we just started selling all of that. And, you know, at the end of, um, end of last month for year one, we're, we're at about 10 million, 800,000. So it'll be over 11 million in premium at the end of this month. Um, which like, I'm looking at these numbers. I'm like, is this real? (laughs) Like. (laughs) You know, we we could be at a hundred million in a couple of years, right? Which which would be impossible in the previous vehicle, yeah. but in this one, it just the potential for growth. It's pretty much like, yeah. where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And you can get it done. Um, yeah, Ryan, I think those are really really uh, amazing numbers. Um, I think a lot of agents listening will probably fall out on their chair hearing you say those. <laughs> yeah, you know, one year. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think what people are going to want to know, if you don't mind, um, how are you niched and wh- what percentage is commercial, what percentage is personal? Yeah, so we're 95% personal lines um, and about 5% commercial. So we started, we're starting to get more into commercial now. Um, obviously, you know, we started with a bank, right? So last year, August, you know, when we started up, it, it, the market was wide open. There was, you know, nobody was in a moratorium. Everybody wanted business. And for the rest of the year, that's what we did. We just wrote as much as we, we could have. Um, and then earlier this year, you know, especially in states like New York, California, Florida, uh, the loss ratio pressures have been insane mm-hmm. and, you know, all the carriers are taking a step back because they can't get approved rates. So DOI is not allowing approved rates and, you know, they're losing money left and right. So what are you going to do? They're going to say, Hey, put the, pump the brakes. <laughs> we're not taking any new business. So we're seeing that now on the personal line side, which is forcing us to move to commercial. So, we're just starting to really dip our toes in commercial now. Um, but my guys have been having real, you know, they've been having fun with it. So, you know, we're going after. Hmm? And what does your staff look like? I mean, to, to handle million dollars a month. I mean, what, what, what does that look like? So currently, you know, we have, I would say we have about, um, I can tell you exactly how many people we have producing. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right. So we do have, um, you know, when we started this, you know, I started it with the intent to essentially become like a franchise. Right. So we started, you know, I had a few friends reach out and says, you're go- you're doing this. I want to do it with you. So we have about 10 offices um, currently that are producing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're all pretty much central to New York. Um, we're going to start looking some other states soon, but these are, you know, friends of mine that, that have been in the industry and they wanted to kind of come along and, 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 you know, do what we're doing. So we have about, you know, within a year, we appointed about 10 agencies, um, that's, you know, under the Clarity brand, and they're also starting to produce. And some of them are at the point where they're hiring staff and, growing their agencies to, you know, with us. So, I mean, I altogether, I mean, I don't know exactly how much producers we have at the moment with throughout all the agencies, but it's probably, you know, 
more than 30 or 40 at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. You have your own agency as well, Brian? Yeah, we have our own, we have our own in-house agency. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, you know, we want, you know, I didn't want to say like, you know, we we don't want, I I want to set the example. We want to set the presence, right? I don't want to say, hey, come, we'll appoint you. Good luck. Right. Come here, look at what we do, right? Can you do this? Do you see yourself doing this? Then it might make sense for us to work together. Makes sense. What's that team look like internally that that is inside of your branch? Yeah. So internally, we have uh, five producers. Okay. Um, and so we 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 just <laughs> one of my in house producer here. We had a new agency just started up with us two months ago, um, and I was his best friend who was a producer at another captive agency. So he's like, Hey, you mind if I go work there? I'm like, no, man, yep. <laughs> <laughs> go, on, go on over. So we, you know, we encourage that. And even when I was at Allstate, you know, most of my employees ended up becoming agency owners, yep. right? Cause my whole thing is like, you know, if I bring a new producer in, I know at the time, you know, at Allstate, we didn't pay our producers renewals. Right. Right. Because it's just it wasn't there. Yeah. It's more on the front end. So here we can we can do that. We can right. give them reasons to stay and grow and earn more and grow with us. Yeah. But they didn't have the option to do that. So, you know, when I, I really get a top notch producer because, you know, my whole recruiting effort was come in. I know you're going to you're you're hungry. You're a hustler. In two years, you're not going to want to do this job anymore. You're gonna want to. You're gonna want to be the boss, and mm-hmm. I get that. So I'm happy to help, yeah. right? I'm happy to help you open your own agency. Just give me two years. Give me your best, and you train the next guy coming in, and you can get out with my blessings and my help, right? So talk, talk big- about that two years. Talk about that two years. So what do you expect from that producer? Because obviously expectations in your office is going to be a lot different for expectations for different offices. So right. give us like a day to day maybe of like what that produ- what do you expect from that producer for them to be successful? To Because every producer, I'm assuming, wants to at one point obviously own something or do their own thing or maybe right. be a bigger part of an agency that they are a part of. Right. So like what right. are your expectations? Like what do you expect from them? What do you what do you make them do? That'd be good for us to hear. You know, so that's that's so the biggest thing is you have to be able to identify if this person has the ability or even the desire to mm-hmm. do that, right? If they don't have the desire to ever run their own stuff because it's too stressful, yeah, then that's fine. Like I have producers that have been with me from day one that are still here. They're like, hey man, I got my clients, I got my referrals, I just want to write my deals, I want yeah. to go home, I don't want to deal with anything else. And they don't have no desire yeah. to, to, to open an agency. And I respect that, right? That's cool. But, you know, when I have a producer come in and, and I know that this person is ambitious and they're hungry, then I start them off from day one. And I say, look, here's a plan. You're, we're going to go two years. You're going to do everything that I do to build this business. And then that's what you're going to use to build your own. Uh-huh. So, you know, okay, do you know how to call leads? Yes. Right. Do you know how to create relationships with, you know, center of influences? Can you meet mortgage brokers and realtors and, you know, bankers or whoever can send you business? Can you cultivate those relationships, become friends, treat them well, take care of their customers? Yeah, we can do that. So, you know, I have them prepared as a producer for the things that they're going to be doing when they end up owning their own agency. So that comes with, okay, let's teach you how to sell first. Right. You might know how to sell, but do you really know how to sell? Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> let's let's make sure you know how to sell. Right. And and I think the biggest thing that I look for too is they have to have, you know, it, it, I look for empathy. Yeah. Right. Because when you're working with people, right, you gotta be able to have some empathy because <laughs> not everybody's gonna think the way that you do. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna see things the way that you see it. Um, so you have to be able to manage relationships. Right. So, you know, some of my top producers that can sell, they can hit the phone for six hours, zero empathy, like zero. They could close 10 times more deals if they actually cared about the person that they were talking mm-hmm. to. Right. 
So like, that's a big thing. Cause if you're, if you're going to have people to follow you, if you have people, you know, that it's going to be working under you, you have to be able to relate to them. You have to treat them the way that you want to be treated. So, you know, these are all things that I look for when I'm hiring a producer and I'm training a producer, but I get them to go out there and, you know, get them to bring their own business in too. I think one of the things that where a lot of sales producers make mistakes is they assume everything that's going on in the call and all they really need to do is assume the sale. So they need to be energetic. They need to be enthusiastic that, hey, I have an opportunity here. I'm going to sell this. I'm going to close this call. This call right here, I'm going to close. But once they get the client on the phone, the prospect on the phone, they need to slow down. Yep. They need to slow down and and have that empathy, like you're saying, to yeah. go through everything and don't assume. Like, you know, I see so many producers rush to the coverage page, mm-hmm. and then they just go, "Oh, bodily injury is this, property damage is this, and oh, your comprehensive collision. Oh, I just want full coverage. Oh, we don't call it full coverage. We do this. Well, they don't. You didn't. Ex- you're just rushing yeah. through it to yeah. get to that price, yeah. and assuming that that price is going to be what they want to buy. Whereas if you were on the call and you did it correctly, you've got some stories mixed in there. You understand what their true problems are. You mm-hmm. understand their lifestyle a little bit more about what really they need. Now you're not selling. You're you're just presenting what you've got that they need and they're going to want to buy. So that's the biggest thing when, you know, because this is labeled a sales job, right? It, it's, it, get sales out of the way, like focus on the relationship, right? Yes. So when I'm talking to somebody, you know, in my head, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm really nice. I'm a cool guy. Like <laughs> you should want to buy from me, right? Like, like you should want to buy from me. I don't, I don't, there's no self-defeat here, right? I enjoy talking to you. I hope that you enjoy talking to me and I hope you become my client for life. And that's the mindset that I have when I'm talking to any prospect, right? And and that's the hardest part when you get a new producer in, you know, sometimes they beat themselves up because they're trying to, you know, make a sale. They try too hard. They fumble on everything and they, they haven't closed anything for two weeks. And they're like, are you going to fire me? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like I hear your calls. Like I can hear the nervousness in your calls. You're not being genuine. You're just trying to get a payment to get a sale to look good. Forget all of that. Put it aside, okay? And focus on the person on the other side. Focus mm-hmm. on building that relationship with that person. Mm-hmm. And then if you're able to solve a problem, you're going to get the sale. If that's you're not, okay. you're not. That's good, man. D- dig deeper on that, my man. So like you're on the phone with me. This is for the producers, obviously. You're on the phone with me. First time talking to me. What are some things you're saying to discover like, okay, is Cyrus like a talker or is he just like, okay, brush me off? Is he too busy? Does he what like what are some things you're doing in the front of the call to discover to keep me on? Because the idea is to keep me on the phone for 10, 15 minutes, right? right? So what right. are some things you're doing in the front of the call or did when you were selling to right. get me to be engaged? So I mean, you know, it it, it really depends on who you get on the phone. Right. And New York is very tricky. <laughs> it's probably one of the hardest places to be on the phone with, you know, right? Like I've I've actually called leads by accident. One time I, I bought leads in like Georgia. Um, it was like this this one of these ex state companies. And I didn't for some reason we didn't pay attention to it. We were just calling these people and they were so nice. They're like, Yeah, I'll take a quote. What's your address? <laughs> Shit. I can't. I can't help you. (laughs) I was like, that's too easy. But, you know, when I'm, when I'm calling, I'm talking to a prospect, you know, I, I make sure, you know, obviously if they pick up, you have, you have a few seconds, right. You have a few seconds to get their interest. Mm -hmm. And the first thing people want to do is get you off the phone. They don't know who you are. They don't know why you're calling them. You're just a telemarketer and they just want to, get you off the phone. Right. So, you know, I tried to, I mean, it's, it's been a while. I'm probably rusty, but 
I don't have a set script on when I'm talking to people. Uh I can kind of get a gauge for who I'm talking to based on their tones. Right. And then I can run into something, something really quick, like, oh, it's such a terrible hot day. Right. I wish I was at the beach. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Uh Yeah, I was at Jones Beach last week. Ah, the weather was great. And you just, you just start talking about something else. And then you get back to what you want to talk to to them about. Right. So, you know, most people are like, yeah, I'm calling you about your insurance. No, let's find something else to talk about. Let's find something that's interesting, you know, to that person on the other side of the phone to bring down that, their, their guard, right. Break that barrier. If you jokes, jokes are always like something funny, something, (laughs) something quick. Um, you know, once you get the guard down, it's like, oh, you're a real person. Yeah. You know, okay, I can relate to this. Um, I talk a lot about my kids. Yeah. I love my kids. I love talking about my kids. And it turns out most people who are children love talking about their children. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Absolutely. We got football season starting, you know, God willing, the Giants win three games this year. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's pushing it, bro. That's a little. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, when we're buying, you know, when we're buying leads, um, we kind of try to do some research on who we're calling to. Um, yeah, quick Google search. Maybe you pop into Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, a lot of people mm-hmm. don't do that. Yeah. Uh, but what we do is, you know, I think the biggest thing for us when it comes to calling our leads, like we don't we don't really have a lot of success with new leads that we're calling. Yeah. Like when we're buying new leads. We have more success with our ex-ates. Fair enough. Because we've 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 talked to them, or at least they've heard our vo- voice yeah. maybe once or twice on a renewal before. Yeah. And on that third call, if I'm calling you, you bet we're best friends now, right? Because I'm like, yeah. hey, Joe, yeah, it's Brian. Dude, I am finally able to save you some money. Are we doing uh-huh. that? Yeah. What, what do you, who's this? Yeah, it's Brian from Allstate. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. We, months ago you remember your ticket finally fell off and guess what we're competitive yeah <laughs> are you still paying 275 with state farm well dude i got it for 125 we doing this yes sir send it to me right now all right it's in your email what's your credit card <laughs> <laughs> how are you paying that's that's so, cool you know the x dating stuff is big for us okay. um which i i prefer working on older leads because we make sure that our follow-up system is in front of them. Correct. So by the time we're getting back to them, it might be a year from now, it might be two years from now. We, we already have a relationship. We've spoken once or twice. We might've texted once or twice. Certainly you've seen a few of my emails, right? So it makes it a lot easier. Brian, um, do you uh, hire a, like VAs or certain people to do those calls for your producers or are you making producers call? Yeah, no, I make my producers call. Yeah. I, I don't understand. And maybe you guys can shed some light on that, on the VA making the calls. I don't. I don't I'm do what you do. Um, so I'm very intrigued by it. I know a lot of, you know, many successful. I mean, obviously you're very successful at it. Um, it's just not the path we we chose to go down. We work with loan officers and real estate agents and use them as referral sources. Um, hoping that the goal is, is that the retention's higher. We lead in with the home. We get yeah. the auto umbrella life. Obviously we, I'm, I'm a, I'm a guy I lead with uh, the umbrella. That's how we get all of our sales. And, and we do that similar to what you're saying, Brian, by, by building that relationship with them through stories, jokes, are uh, you know things that are lived every single day that they go through funny stuff that yeah. happens and how you can you know bond over that call to be able to get the business and continue to keep that business right i mean right. we like i said it's likability and reliability yeah um but i'm just you know a lot of people are, what i hear is that they're getting certain people or vas or you know somebody that maybe it's not licensed to just right. set the appointment knowing that there's some interest built to yeah. save time for the producer to know that they're getting on a call with a qualified, likely to buy prospect instead of going in cold. Gotcha. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've never, you know, I've never done that. Like I've never used a, I have friends that would use like a call center and, you know, do the live transfers and stuff like that. They've always been really expensive. Um, I didn't see the benefit of it. Well, you're like me. I like one call close. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to get you on the phone. I'm going to put you through a Raider. So where's, you know, I was an ex-All State agent. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you I'm go sorry, in, guys. I, know. <laughs> well, I was State Farm. Farm. I, I'm not any better. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 far, far, farmers yeah. over here. <laughs> so anyways, you know, you get, you get on that call and you have to go through, you know, four pages and boom, you can get a quote right away with us. You've got to put all that information in a Raider. And then you got to make sure all the discounts are there, that everything's applied. You might have to do that two or three times to make sure that the rate is is the best what it's going to be. But the right. way I look at it is I'm trying to train my people to say, look, don't worry. Yeah, find out what they're paying. That's an advantage, right? We want to know what they're paying and what we got. But use that time while you're on the phone and data entry and putting everything in to find out as much as you can about them. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's going to open up all the opportunities of all the products we have to offer because it all fits everyone's life. Mm. So um, yeah. I, I like the one call close. I'm a big fan. A lot of people say it can't be done. We do it every day. Uh, it's not easy, right. yeah. uh, but it, it, it gets done. And I feel like we have a better grip with that family, with that household than other agencies do. There's a lot of research that says that, honestly, as soon as you get off the phone, there is a, a 55% chance now that you're probably going to get a hold of them again uh, to, to basically sell them, even though like the rates even might be better. How many times you're like, dude, I've called you 10 times. Our rates are better. And they just have an, they just have an answer. It's just hard to get a hold of them or whatnot. So um, I definitely agree. the most annoying ever. And I think <laughs> when you can save someone money, and they've reached to you, you know, they've referred to you or they've reached out to you or you reached out to them, right. saving the money. You did what you said was promised. You know, Cyrus, we, that's what we, that's also what I preach. You know, um, you, you're saving this money, but it doesn't mean you've done your job. Yeah, right, right. You haven't built enough value for them to trust you that they should come with you. There's still some ifs in there. Yeah. Yep. And there's some what ifs. And that that you know that brand that trust has is not quite a hundred percent, and so I think that's where you really do need to. Uh, it, it sounds like Brian, your sales producers are amazing. I'd love uh, to talk with them and and know what their uh, you know their uh, you know, challenges are and what they face and how they overcome them. I think it'd be interesting, but that's why we have a scripted sales call process. It's not you know, telling everybody what to say for every word, but right. there is a process that we follow that every sales call goes through. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, I think, and that builds self-confidence from the producer's perspective. I mean, I think a lot of what, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know you very well, Brian, but I can tell like you're a cool guy. And I think that that's really hard. To get, it's hard to get that through to, to clients without uh, having some self-confidence in there. People come in and like you were saying, really desperate for the sale. And right. You can't be confident and desperate at the same time. It just doesn't, doesn't work like that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard, right? When I was broke and selling, it was hard to be confident. <laughs> right? yeah, like, it, it, it was hard. Um, I still managed to, to find a way to find that confidence because, you know, it comes down to Hey, like this is my current state. It's not my permanent state, right? Like it can change. So you know, you always have to have that mindset that you know I might be in a little shit now, but it's gonna get better. It's not gonna be like this forever. But it takes me and it takes effort for me to get out of it. And you know, my biggest thing, and I and I've said this a million times. You know, people ask ask me like, how do you find good employees? How do you find good producers? And I say, I always hire PhDs. Right, poor, hungry, and determined. <laughs> I love that. Right? <laughs> no, this is gonna sound super. I've never heard that before. <laughs> really? No. Yeah. Um, those I love have that. Been, those have been my best employees, right? Yeah. PhDs. 
um, because at one point I was a PhD myself uh-huh. <laughs> and, you know, I can respect that. Um, but, you know, it, it's hard. It's not an easy job, but it's also not a hard job, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, we just hired a new kid and he's like, yeah, where else am I going to push paper and make money? <laughs> mm. That's funny. Like, I like what you think. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, I want to go to to mortgage and real estate people for you real quick. For some of the producers that are that are on the call listening, um, what are some what are some tips and tricks? I know because I know you do a ton of those those relationships, and maybe you can go back in the day because there's a lot of captive agents that listen to this podcast as well. What yeah. what, are, what are some tips and tricks you use at all state or your producers use today uh, to be able to build some of these mortgage referral relationships? And I know Cool Brian. It's hard to be Cool Brian. It's very easy to build a relationship with Cool Brian, but what about the other 90% of producers are not cool, Brian? What are some things they could potentially do to basically uh, build some of those relationships and, and, and write some business? Um, you know, I would say the biggest thing is to be be helpful, right? Add value to what they're currently doing, right? That's that. the biggest thing, like be available, right? So like if one of my referral partners call me, you know, at 10 o'clock at night, Hey man, are they okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, no problem. I'll take care of it. Right. I'm not too big for that. Like that, yeah. that's simple. <laughs> it just yeah. comes down to you taking care of that relationship that you already have. Mm-hmm. Um, I had ended up passing on a few of my relationships to another producer that I hired. And, and this was a producer that really didn't have that empathy. He was mm-hmm. good, good at sales. He knew all the scripts. He's pound the phone, but he just didn't have that care and um, ruined a few of my relationships because, you know, kind of broke policy and then followed up with the T docs and oh. ended up writing a policy for one of my uh, referral partners, his own house. And policy got canceled because he never, you know, followed up with the T docs. And he was like, well, it's not my problem. We went to the service girl. I'm like, it is your problem. Yeah. You wrote it. Like, see it through till the end. Right. Um, so that's the biggest thing is just providing value. Like how, one, you have to go find those relationships, right? They're not hard to find. Yeah, how do you find them? Well, you go, you go out, you meet them and you say yeah. hello, right? Yeah. And here's, here's the thing that kills me. I'll have somebody go out. I was like, wow, I spoke to, you know, five mortgage brokers. And, you know, uh, nobody's sending me anything. Well, (laughs) how many times did you speak to them? This one time. I'm like, no, 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 no. They don't, they forgot. They just met you. Yeah. They didn't have time for that. They're busy. They're trying to close loans, (laughs) right? So the biggest thing is like, you have to be able to be in front of people more than once, Mm -hmm. right? And it's not that they don't want to send you their business. They just, you don't, they don't know you. Mm -hmm. So show up a couple of times right? Go to those events. These mortgage brokers are always holding some charity golf game, some, you know, fundraising night, some, something like that. Um, I always find those and I make a donation Mm -hmm. or I show up and I give, you know, and I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm not expecting anything in return. And most cases it comes back to me where they say, Hey man, thanks for your donation. That was so Mm -hmm. nice of you. I don't even know you. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's get to know each other. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> so there's there's a million ways to get in front of people, but you can't just show up once and expect to earn their business. You got to show up a couple of times, actually get to know them. And then when they do send something to you, make sure you go above and beyond to get it done. <laughs> there, there's a story here. I got to tell you guys. So there's a loan officer we've been using for seven years. We insure him. We took him from... Back at back at State Farm, 2015 is when we wrote him. He's been sending his business for seven years. Pretty big loan officer. And we keep track of it on a monthly basis. We we go to our top 10 refer partners every month and drop off stuff and just, just build relationships in my agency, my own agency. So there's one that we haven't heard from for about three months. And we consistently get four or five from him a month. And we haven't heard of him from three months. I said, hey, this month, why don't we just go to this person's office? Let's just go. 
So in our, in our, in our, and I do this myself with our, with our brand ambassador, we, we go to these loan officers and real estate places and drop off stuff. And just every month, our top 10. And I, and I went to an 11th one because I haven't heard from this guy for, for, for probably three to four months. I walk into his door and I'm like, Hey man, I just appreciate what you've been doing for us for a long time and what you're doing right now. And I see there's like four business cards of a competitor of mine that does the same thing, what we do all over. And the reason he started sending his referrals to this new person was because we haven't been to his office for six months. I haven't <laughs> touched, I haven't touched base with him for six yeah. months. And yeah. this other, this other insurance person consistently every month has been sending stuff to his house. And he goes, my kids open up random stuff from this insurance person on a monthly basis. And they right. really like it. My wife really likes it. She comes to my office. He goes, Cyrus, I like you, man. But like, and I've been, he's been saying business for six and a half years. Right. So what I'm going at is like, you can't, ex- these guys have been saying this for six and a half and I didn't go to his office for three to six months, right? And we still insure him. And he started sending business to another insurance person because we weren't in front of him. You got to keep dating, man. You hey, got to keep, keep dating. dating. You can't, you you can't keep expect. dating. I, I, that was a struggle for me. You know, I got married and we had the first kid and I'm like, wife, flowers. <laughs> 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 who has time for that? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, you know, it's just like, it's like any relationship. The more effort you put to, into it, you know, the more fruitful it's going to be. Right. Oh, so. Sure just watering your grass. So I, again, we all take that stuff for granted. We're like, Oh, he's a friend of mine. He's always going to send me his stuff. Oh man. It's yeah. a two way street. Like, yeah. but yeah, that was, that was a, that was a good lesson learned right there. Huh? Great lesson. And we track, we track who sends us and how much on a monthly basis. We're religious about it right. for all the way down. Right. Every lead that comes in gets some kind of a, a name attached to it. And then if we don't see yeah. that name for a while, it should be like, okay, we got to go figure out what's going on over there. Right. And a right, lot of right, producers, right. producers don't do that. They just think yeah. that they're going to keep sending in business. But there's a lot of people like us, man, that are going around finding new relationships. And I would take, I would take her insurance, this girl's insurance relationships in a heartbeat if I had an opportunity, because yeah, at yeah, the end yeah. of the day, man, I got to feed my family and she's got to feed her family, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, it really just comes down to, you know, how hungry you are. Um, Love that. So- but you know, it's, 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 it's work, it's work. And you can't take, you can't take it for granted, right? You can't take any of your relationships for granted. Um, you know, so. they say the grass is always greener where you water it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Dude, I love that. Hey, I want to talk about two things before we get you off. Cause I know you got to get on the road here soon. Um, I want to talk about your culture. Yeah. You've got a unique culture in your office to keep your producers attached and together. You're playing ping pong. You're having a lot of fun. You got a lot of social media videos with your team and all that stuff. Like it just sounds like a, 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 a great place to go work at. Like if I'm like just looking for a job and I want, I want to be in the insurance industry, like what's the idea behind it? What do you guys do? Um, we replicate some of those things and we've been doing kind of what you're doing about culture inside of the office. Share a little bit about that, man, for some of the people listening. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing for me is that I, I want to like where I'm at, right? Like I want to want to be there, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So, you know, I, I don't like, I don't enjoy discomfort in any way. Like no one does. Maybe some people are into pain and that whatever, yeah. but not me. Um, but I also, you know, I like to live a particularly free life. Like I don't want to be tied down to, you know, crazy schedules. I want to be flexible to spend time with my kids. You know, I have three, I have a fourth one on the way. Nice. (laughs) God bless you. you These things are important to me, but I also want to enjoy what I do. I want to enjoy, I want to have fun. I want to enjoy the people that I'm around. Right. So people that we work with, we end up spending a lot of time with them. Mm -hmm. Right. Some of us even more than, you know, our own family. So one, I want to make sure the people that come in and work here that they enjoy spending time with me and everybody else that's here. Like that's super important for us. Mm -hmm. We don't all have to be friends, you know, it's weird. It's weird to say, but everyone here enjoys each other's company. Mm -hmm. Everyone here adds to each other. 
and they're willing to help um, anyone with what they need help with without anything in return. Um, and that starts with, you know, me setting the example, right? Because if I was like not setting that example, then it would be a completely different culture. So like I said, I like, <clears throat> I like my time. Um, I like, I work when I, you know, I can just plug in and get my stuff done. But some days I need to leave early because, you know, kids got to go to the doctor. Some days I need to come in late because I got to drop them off to school. Um, and I give them the freedom and the ability to do all of that, too, because they have families of their own. So the biggest thing for me is, you know, I don't need you here at nine to five <laughs> right? or 10 to six or whatever it is. Like we don't have, you know, a time clock. We don't have any. I don't track your hours. I don't do any of that. Um, you're free to come and go as you like as long as your production is good, mm -hmm. right? If you can, if you can clock in for four hours, close some deals, do your follow-ups, get your work done. I don't care what you do with the rest, mm -hmm. right? It's not important to me because your numbers speak for themselves, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, there's a thing between, um, there's a book I have to read and <laughs> I think it's called Deep Work. So there's something that's, um, there's deep work and there's shallow work, <laughs> right? So someone could be doing shallow work for eight hours, whereas someone could do deep work for uh -huh. two hours and get the same amount of work done, right? <laughs> so, you know, I kind of tell them like, hey, you don't have to pound the phone for six hours, but if you have two people that you're talking to, do your best with those two and you could close those two in one day and your whole day is good, yeah. <laughs> right? Right, right? So, you know, we like to have fun. We we spend a lot of time together. Um, we do have a ping pong table. So we play a lot of ping pong. Uh, we go to mm. we go to lunch, you know, once a week. We go to drinks, we go out, we take trips. Um that's like something that's important to me. And you know, my, my wife never really understood this when we when we first like when she saw like how I treat my employees, they're like, you don't have to be friends with your employees. I'm like, one, I'm not a big like, you know corporation with no personality like we're real people right right and you know one thing that i've learned is that <clears throat> people work harder if they love you right True. compared to if they hate you or or they're working for you out of fear mm -hmm. right so for me like i care about everybody here um i hope that they feel the same way mm -hmm. <laughs> but it doesn't matter if they don't I'm if I give you my best, then I expect your best in return. And if you don't give me your best, then that's not on me. That's on you because mm -hmm. I've done my part. Right. Yep. That's so, a good way to put it. Yep. Brian, you have three boys right now or yeah, three boys. Right. OK. What's the biggest lesson, man, you've learned from the three boys? Because I've got two boys and it's a nightmare. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it's. It's weird for me because, you know, I grew up without a father and I remember as a kid growing up, like I always wanted a dad. <laughs> right? yeah. So, you know, I, I missed out on that. Um, I don't I'm not sure I missed out a lot. Um, I'm glad with the way I turned out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I found out about my father and who he is and what he does. And I'm like, yeah, I'm probably a good thing I wasn't around. <laughs> So everything happens for a reason, right? Absolutely. So with my kids, um, they're, you know, I spend a lot of time with them. I spend a lot of time with them. I look at what I'm doing now. And sometimes the thoughts cross my mind that if I don't spend as much time with my kids or, you know, if I work on the weekends and I do this, I could probably be a little further ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right? But I'm just not willing to sacrifice that. Um, and I think it's uh, Jordan Peterson says, you only have four years with your kids. Mm -hmm. You have four years with your kids. That's it. And it's done. And for me, that's important. Like, I want to spend those four years with them, mm -hmm. right? I want to be able to cultivate them, be there for them, and bring them up in the way that I see fit. Um, so I want to make sure that I don't neglect that time. Because once those four years are gone, you know, they're on their own. They belong to the world now, right? They're yeah. in schools, they're this, they're that. 
So if they don't have a proper foundation as they're going out into the world, then I would have lacked as a parent. So I, you know, I don't really, you know, my six-year-old, he's, he's his own man now. That's it. Like he, I see his personality, like he's set in stone about what he's going to do, what he's going to eat. Can't change that. Mm -hmm. Right. The other two I'm still working on. Right. We can, we can work on that. But I say that to say this, like, you know, we work hard, we're ambitious, we want a lot. Um, but the, you know, at the end of the day, like that's the most important thing to me, right? Children, the family, business. I love it. I enjoy it. It's a sport. Um, but money's always going to be there. <laughs> it's not right. going in, right? Business is always going to be here. So it might take me a little longer to get where I want to go. It's not going anywhere. But those kids, and they they're are. growing, they're growing fast. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, before we get to the last question, I've seen of Benito or Jason. If you guys have any any last things for Mister Brian, Cool Brian oh, is what we're gonna call him. Cool Brian. Cool Brian. Uh, it's been a wealth of knowledge, man. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, Brian, uh, super cool, man. I uh, it's it's a pleasure getting to talk with you this past hour and uh, just get inside of what you know your operation looks like and who you are as a person. And I can already tell you're a fun dad. Um, you got a lot <laughs> of things going on, and I'll just say, you know, my mom was a very important role role model for me. She's my hero. Um, yeah. I I do everything in this business in my life to make her proud. Um, yeah. and. I told myself when I started this business, when I got back into insurance, I was a loan officer before. That's why we worked with loan officers. But um, I told myself, I'm never going to miss a kid's activity. I'm going to make sure I'm there no matter what it is. Uh, yep. I, I've done a, <laughs> I've done a leprechaun reading at their school before because I look like a leprechaun. <laughs> I've done, I've done That's Abraham so Lincoln. I've done, you know, <laughs> no matter what it is. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm not going to miss it. I'm going to be there. And I really <laughs> highly respect that because when somebody knows that that's how important that is to that child's life, um, oh, yeah. that's where you make the difference as a mm. human on this earth and not the, what the business is doing. Love right. that. Right. Love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Good stuff. Well, hey, Brian, man, before we go, last question, my man. This podcast is called Win a Day. So what does Brian have to do every day for the day to be considered one what are some things make your bed um hit this many sales <laughs> calls whatever like carrier what are what is one or two things you have to do every day uh for your day to be one so <laughs> the days that i am most productive or i feel most alive um would be a day exactly like today right um which these are habits that i've worked hard and I had to learn to do. It's mm -hmm. not something natural for me. I love sleep, right? I would sleep until 10 a.m. if I could, mm -hmm. but not not with children, not mm -hmm. happening. Right? Good luck with that. So my days that I'm winning are days that I go to bed early, right? <laughs> I, I go to bed early. I turn the TV off. I go to bed early. I'm up early. I get some movement in, right? Mm -hmm. I get home before the kids wake up, make their breakfast, get them ready for school. I come to the office because now I'm, I'm full. I'm pumped. Up. You know, I'm like, oh, I've got so out. much coffee. Yes, <laughs> coffee, definitely. You know, I'm in the office. I'm in a much better mood because I've had such a productive morning already, mm -hmm. right? And that sets a tone for my day to day, and. You bet your ass with a great morning like that, the day's going to be really good, right? And then, I, you know, I get home, eat some dinner, hang out with the kids, put them to bed, and then go back again. There we go. <laughs> that's that's a winning day for me. Dude, that's a guys, that. Have you guys heard the Adam Sandler stand up where he's talking about how, you know, people are supposed to get up early? Have you all have you, have you ever heard that yet? YouTube, yeah. but it's pretty funny. So he talks about, hey. You know, I get up at four in the morning and, you know, I drink my water and then I, I go for a walk or I go to the gym and then, you know, it's, you know, now it's six o'clock and I'm like, okay, well, I, I guess I need to grab some breakfast. So I'll grab some breakfast. And then, you know, I get the kids all ready for school and get them all squared away. And then I'm like, okay, it's, 
it's eight o'clock, it's nine o'clock. I'm like, well, I guess I need another breakfast. So I'll eat another breakfast. <laughs> and then he's like, by 11 o'clock, I'm like, what the heck do I do with the rest of the day? <laughs> <laughs> I've done everything. Yeah, it's I great. It's, I it's great. That. I mean, I, I started waking up early, I would say within the last two years, within the last two or three years. And it's been great. I mean, I don't mm. have time to like, sit there and meditate and all that bullshit like <laughs> salt water and all that nonsense but you know it just feels a lot better when when you're up so early you, you can have a moment of quiet yes. you know a moment of clarity no pun intended clarity and sure no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um great name awesome. by the way love yeah. it yeah yeah thank you thank you um so yeah it, it's that's been that's been a game changer for me just getting up early good for you uh, yeah yeah well, hey man this was this was incredible appreciate you man jay jason benito man y'all gotta follow him on social media man he's fun he's fun, he's fun to, he's fun to watch and he's really good to good to connect with as well man because he's 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 becoming one of my fives man so <laughs> hey appreciate you man appreciate all of you guys <laughs> have a nice day thanks for being on and uh, we'll talk so to you much. next time all right, all right see you guys. later Bye-bye. guys yes.